go. <laughs> Here's Andre. There we go. Did you give it a panelist prompt? I'm working on it. Okay. And you'll have to accept that panelist prompt, Audrey. Yeah, it says join. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. So now you should be able to mute and unmute, Audrey. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hi there. Yes, you made it. And we're already recording, just so you know. <laughs> Good. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Bob is here quite yet. Okay. Nope, I don't see any phone number like that. I think both of his are 917 to start. Okay. Well, you got eight minutes, or no, two minutes, excuse me. Oh, there he is. There Gosh. He is. Now you'll just tab over to join Bob. There we go. We got some Iowa people. We got Julie Piper and. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I can Good. Okay. Anybody else, uh, Krista? I think Audrey, we're good Audrey, now. Audrey, Audrey, is Audrey here? Yep, yeah. she's here. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna mute for now. Okay. Yes, I will too. Yeah, we got Matt Fairhill and Julie from Iowa. So thanks for joining us. I posted it to the Iowa list this morning, hoping some people would. Great, you got 26 people in the audience. Oh, someone raised their hand with an area code of 650. Do you want me to just wait? Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and wait and then we can. Okay, we're not taking raised hands right now, okay? We had an Albert last night that jumped on and he thought it was last night, but I'm hoping he comes back. 28. We'll give it about one more minute. Mm -hmm. We got Paul. Hi, Paul. Mm -hmm. Jason Castingway. <laughs> yes, I have never talked to him, but I've seen your name quite often. Well, he's a sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's on some of the, what is the more social calls that I'm always working during. <laughs> He's a broadcaster on ACB Media also. ACB oh. Media 4. Oh, great. Yeah, Noriega. Wow. 
34. Okay, right. we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm sure we'll have more people jump in, but welcome to grade three Braille. And I'm really excited. We have over 30 participants. So this will be a great call. I am Kristen Steele and I have with me Audrey Shading and Bob White. They're both from New York. I'm from Iowa, but I will be facilitating this call and then we will take turns. So Audrey will probably go next and Bob. So you'll have a wide array of instruction. And tonight we're just going to go over some of the basics of grade three Braille. And as I kind of said in the description of the course that I posted, we will be building upon it and doing a new lesson every week. So you should have something to write with, and I'll give you a couple minutes to grab that while I do our introduction and talk about grade three Braille a little bit. Uh, you can use a Perkins Brailler. If you're really daring, you can use a slate and stylus, or you can use a Braille Note Apex, Braille Note Touch, some of those things that write in BRF. So grade three Braille is a form of shorthand. And I'm going to pull up, I have the Hadley book in front of me. And I'm not going to read the whole introduction, but it says grade three Braille is an extension of grade two. It requires the continued use of all signs and abbreviations learned in grade two and comprises additional material derived in the same manner as our grade two signs and abbreviations. So it does not include UEB. It builds off of EBAE, the original English Braille American edition. So a couple people had already asked in a previous call, does it, has it been updated? Is UEB included? No, sadly it is not, but that is what makes grade three sort of nostalgic. It's something of history that there's probably a handful of people who still know and use it. And I'm one of them. I'll admit I know the basics. I think that Audrey and Bob know a little bit more than I do, but I'm excited to broaden my knowledge with you. So it says the purpose of this course is to equip you, the student, with a means of taking personal notes more speedily than is possible in grade two. The course will appeal to those of you who need to take notes in class or during periods when you have a help of a sighted reader. So it is a standardized system. However, if you find certain signs or symbols along the way that I teach or Audrey teaches that you just think, oh, I'm never gonna use that. For example, I was talking to Bob last night and he said the sign TD that we know of as today is actually an abbreviation for TAD. TAD in grade three. So grade three uses that TD as TAD. And as the three of us were talking, we're like, how often do we actually use TAD in a sentence? We use today quite a bit more frequently. So for me, in my head, it would make perfect sense to leave that sign as today. And you would know for your personal use, that's what you're going to use. Now we say standardized in that it's versatile. If I sent a letter to Bob in the mail, he would be able to read it. And if he wrote me back, I would be able to read it. But just making sure in the context that you know what you mean later on and that your person, if you are going to share it, knows what you mean. So, that's just a brief introduction, and I will go into more if people have questions. But first and foremost, when we start learning grade three, the most important thing to do is to write down the character chart. The character chart builds grade three Braille. It's the foundation from which this code is comprised. So it is comprised of, I believe, seven rows. Yep. So if you have something to write with, I will dictate this character chart very slowly. And I can also go back if people missed it or want something repeated. So if you have your broiler, your slates ready, 
this will build our first lesson, lesson of the numbers. So our character chart, row one, and I wouldn't write row one if I were doing this, I would just write it as is and go down a line when I say two. So the first row are, these are referred to as the one through 10 and are made exclusively in the upper four dots of the braille cell. They are the letters A through J. So that is your first row, A through J. No number sign. I mean, I said one through 10, but I meant the first 10. So it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. That is your first row. And I'll give everyone a minute to kind of write that out. And if I were doing this, I would double space this just to give you a little more room to study it because I'm a very fluent braille reader, but still it's easier to have it laid out better. Okay, so if you have that down, and if I am going too fast, raise your hand, but row two, these are the characters of the cell. Let's see, and I'm reading this off just to make sure I don't make a mistake since I'm in front of so many people. These are characters 11 through 20. Add dot three to the lower left of the cell to all of the characters of row one. So these are the letters K through T. So you notice how they're building. We're adding dot three to A through J. We're forming K through T. K L M N O P Q R S T. And if anyone at all has questions on how to borrow these letters, feel free to ask. But to learn grade three, you should have a good understanding of grade two. But no judgment. If you have any questions, I'm happy to explain any of these letters. Okay, now, once you have K through T written, I would double space again, and we're on our third row. These are characters 21 through 30. Add dots three, six, so the lower two dots, three, six, to each character of row one. So we're thinking of A through J again, and we're adding dots three, six to each of those of A through J. So these are, I will dictate them, U, V, X, Y, Z, like zebra, and four of the, and width, width is the last one. So it goes the to width. So notice we skipped W. In W, it has been, I believe it wasn't part of the, Audrey knows this better than I do, why they skipped W. It wasn't part of the French alphabet, so Louis Braille wasn't didn't part include of the, it. Okay, yeah, so this is based on the French alphabet. Thank you, Bob. So I will repeat these one more time, just in case you didn't get them. This is row three, and they are U, V, like Victor, X, like X-ray, Y, Z, like zebra, and the contraction for and four of the width. Yep, it says W was not in this row. It did not exist in Lewis Braille's French alphabet and was assigned later. So now we are on row four. So I would space down again. And these last couple rows get a little bit trickier. I will just dictate some of these, but I'll describe row four. Characters 31 through 40. Add dot six to the characters from row one. So we're still building on that A through J and we're adding dot six to those A through J. These are the symbols for, not for, but these are the following symbols. I will dictate them. CH, GH, SH, TH, WH, 
E D E R O U O W and W. So yes, at that point, W was added. So I will go one more time with those just because I went a little fast. C H G H S H T H W H E D E R O U O W and W. And if you missed one, or if you're thinking, what was that one? I missed it. You're adding that dot six to A through J. So just think about if you miss ED, or if you have ED and you miss the next one, it's going to be ER because we're adding that dot six. And the next one will be G for that A ER. Okay, I'll give everyone a second to go down a couple more lines. So now we are on row five. And row five is characters 41 through 50. These are row one, except for written in the lower four dots of the braille cell. So if you've ever learned Nimeth code, this is the one through zero in Nimeth code. So they are formed with dots two, three, five, six. So you do the lower of those A through J. And that should be pretty simple compared to the last row. I'll give everyone a second to get those down. Okay, so when you're ready, and this is being recorded as well. I just wanna note that to everyone. So if you think, well, she's going too fast, or I don't know, you can definitely email Cindy and I'll give you my email as well toward the end of this call and we will get that recording to you. So row six, these are characters 51 through 56. You simply must learn these is what my lesson says. They are S-T-I-N-G-B-L-E-A-R apostrophe and hyphen. It is important to know them in this order. So again, they're S-T-I-N-G-B-L-E-A-R apostrophe and hyphen. Give everyone a second to get those down. And row seven, this is our last row. These are characters 57 through 63. These use only the right hand side of the braille cell comprised of dots four, five, six, but they do go in a specific order. So I will read that out here in a second. For the purposes of this discussion, if you see dot numbers, we will list them as numbers one indicating the one cell. So I'm gonna give you the dot numbers. When everyone's ready, four, four, five, four, five, six, five, four, six, five, six, six. So I'll go again, four, four, five, four, five, six, five, four, six, five, six, six. So that is the character chart. And I'd like to give credit to a man named Greg Caps who ran a grade three braille list at one time. And I saved that from him. But at this time, I will take a couple minutes to see if anyone has questions on that chart before I move on. 
All right. <clears throat> we do have. Oh, I'm in the go ahead and call on person. one sec. All right, Jewel. You should be able to unmute Jewel. Yeah. You um, you said seven rows, but I followed along and I only got six. Did I what did I miss? Um, I got the A through J, I got the K through T, I got the um the last of the letters plus the and four and all that. And then I got the lowered letters. And then I've got um, the ST in that row. And then I've got the um, the second column, um, you know, four, four, five, all that. That's six rows. She I missed, you uh, missed row three. She missed the CH through W row. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So oh, maybe I just didn't number that one. Because do you have the, let's see. Yeah, you have That's K row four. C. It's row four. C H G H okay. so through W is I've row got, four. Okay. So I've got one A through J, two K through T, yeah. three U V X and all that. Yeah. Four C H G H, all that. Five S T. I no. N all that. No, no. Five oh. is the is the dropped. Oh no, I'm I, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I, I go ahead. I'm sorry, Jewel. You're right. Five is five is the dropped letters. Five is the nimeth of the lower cell. So five. Oh, is I didn't write down the dropped. dropped letters. Okay, that's what it was. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So you can rebraille and add those. That is the fifth row. Is the dropped letters. Yeah. Right, and the punctuation oftentimes. All right, area code 407. Yes, um, my question is this, it's, it's not, a, it's sort of indirectly, it's not with the chart as much as it is, you were saying that, um, you know, we could of course take notes on something, you know, like one of our note takers or something like that. My question is, um, I'm trying to figure out how to set mine up. Like I'm using a Braille sense. And of course I can write it in grade two, but I ordinarily have it set up so that it translates it into um, text files. So is there a different um, setup or whatever um, that I should use? Or is anybody familiar with it to be able to tell me, you know, when I'm doing this class or whatever that I need to set it up differently so it doesn't, translate it if I want to use this to take notes and it you know it leaves everything the way I've written it I would do a BRF and if you have the capability to create a BRF file that will save all of your dot combinations as is and won't translate okay. all right I'll have to see if there's a, a way to do it you know during class and then just switch it back or something I'll have to look at that and see. Well, I appreciate it. I'll check that out. Thank you. Can, can I make a comment, though? I, I just may be rather yeah. obvious. But there's there's no way on a, any of these note takers you can write in grade three Braille and hope to print it out as a regular print document. There is no backward translation between grade three and grade zero. Is, is that correct, Kristen? I, I believe so. Yes, you can't ever like say email it or print it, it won't translate. But yeah. for your personal use, those BRF files will save your dot combinations. Whereas text is going to try and translate that CH to a CH and the GH sign to a GH. I mean, and if it shouldn't be a problem, but as you get into more complex sentences, you'll probably want that BRF just to make sure your dot combinations save as they are. All right, Frank. Hi there. Just a couple of comments. First off, 
depending on what note taker you're using, there's probably a setting you can change it so that you can you are reading and writing in, in uncontracted grade one braille. And when you do that, then you can put in whatever you want, including grade three and, and read it and write it as is. Um, one other note is kind of obscure, but I happen to be a, a UEB braille transcriber and the, the uh, part of the in, in the UEB rule book. Thank you. And that's all. Okay. <laughs> all right, Nancy, you should be able to unmute Nancy. Hi there. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank you very much for having this class. And I do know grade three Braille very, very well. So if you ever need any assistance explaining things or if anybody ever needs any help, I'm here to help because I love grade three. So that's oh, what I you. wanted to say. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I might just take you up on that sometime. Oh, OK. Thank you. So, yeah. I will give right. you I'll give everyone my email at the very end and then. Oh, that'd be you great. Can write, you can write okay. to me, Nancy, and we will be in touch. Okay, and what's your name? I'm sorry, I don't recognize your voice. I... I'm Kristen. Kristen, okay. Yes. All right, great to meet you, thank you. Thank you. All right, area code 518. This is Mary Beth, and um, one of the, my, my one comment actually, Frank um, already said, which is the thing about grade one would probably not change anything also. Um, but the, the other question I had, is um, sort of, it's like on the, the, the rows, why didn't W just get moved up to the end of row three? I've, maybe if that's an unanswerable question, just tell me. Thank you very much. Andre, take that. It doesn't fit the pattern. You have to, uh, okay. The Braille characters, as we know them, as 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 uh, Kristen described, have a definite pattern to them. And the W, if you look at the pattern, would naturally fit. I believe it's in row four at the very end. It's dot. It's a J with a dot six added, and that that can only be added in one point. So there is an actual pattern to the Braille code and the way it was written. Yeah. Don't forget, W didn't become, a, when the Braille went over to England, they said, oh, there's another symbol for W. What are we going to do? And also what, what Kristen was describing as CHGH and all that, that's the English equivalent. Now, if, if we were giving this course in French or Russian or whatever, we would be identifying dots one six as something else. So... But the, the patterns, the braille dots would be the same, no matter where in the world we would be describing this. All right, David. Yes, I just wanted to say for if you're a braille sense user, if you're a Polaris or a braille sense six user, you use the notepad and you save your material as BRF, you can do that. If you are a U2 or a plus user, uh, then there is no notepad, but in the word processor, you can save as a BRF. So there's no problem there. And you don't have to change anything back, uh, as I think the previous caller alluded to. Uh, everything is, is okay. All you have to do is just save that particular file as a BRF. Oh, thank you. Sure. Okay, area code uh, 650, you should be able to unmute. There you go. Hello, this is Roger Peterson. Um, if you're an old person like me, uh, you might find it useful, as I do, to use computer braille. Um, that way I can even write grade two on a QWERTY keyboard, I mean grade three on a QWERTY keyboard. But um, I also wanted to just mention that as a historical note that since this is BRL, that um, when my ex-wife was at the Illinois School for the Blind in the 1950s, they had a grade three club where they taught grade three. The teacher was Floyd Cargill, who became the first president of BRL. Thank you. That's very interesting. All right. 
area code 816. You should be able to unmute. There you go. We'll go to the next one. Oh, there we go. There you go. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I wonder, could you possibly repeat the last two rows very quickly? I was doing it with the slate and stylus, and I didn't write it quickly enough. Okay, let me grab my thing. So you're needing rows six and seven, correct? Yes. Okay, row six is S T. I N G B L E A R apostrophe hyphen. Okay. Now row seven is all that right side combinations. So that it is, uh, let's see, grab it four, four, five. Four, five, six, five, four, six, five, six, six. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. We'll take about two more questions, Lucy, and then I'm gonna move on. All right, Deborah Robinson, you should be able to unmute. Am I unmuted, Lucy? Yes, you are, yep. Is there a number sign we use or do you just write those things without a number sign in front of the numbers. You just write them without a number sign. If you have trouble like remembering or feeling, you could do a full braille cell in front of them just for positioning. And I've done that okay. before. All right, one more. Dan Dillon, you should be able to unmute. Uh, hello there. There you go. Uh, yes. So, um, no, I guess if anybody on this has just a comment, if anyone on the group has uh, experience reading Braille music, you should know that uh, the seventh row of the Braille chart are the progression of the octave signs uh, from first octave through seventh octave. <laughs> it's actually that. That's how they're derived anyway, in that code. Um, yes, exactly. Because I'm, I'm, uh, I studied uh, physics and music in college, so I know all about okay. that. Yeah, well, thank you for that. Thank you very much for that one, Daniel. Thanks. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right. Okay, so we are going to move on at this point. If you do have questions, please get in touch with me or with Cindy, and we will work with you to get you up to speed. I just want to make sure that everyone has a way to follow along. So we'll go ahead and lower the rest of the hands, Lucy. Yep, I did. <laughs> okay. And what I'm going to touch on tonight is the numbers. And it's the easiest thing to start with is because it builds off that character chart. So the character chart will greatly help you with the numbers. And the Hadley book that I have, it discusses numbers one through 63. And there are ways to do higher numbers such as 125 or 316. And we will get to that as well as writing some dates. We might not get to it all tonight, but next week I think Audrey will build on that before we start the next lesson. So it says, let's see, it gives us all of the character chart in the Hadley book, which is why I really thought to start there because that is what it gives us in the first lesson. And it says a shorter way of writing the numerals is to use the characters in the first five lines above, preceding each with the numeral sign to show that it is functioning as a numeral and not as a letter or any other sign. The following are the numbers from one to 30. So they start one to 30 and then they build. So those character charts are basically one to 30. The numbers one through 10 is number sign A, through zero. So the number sign zero is 10 
in grade three Braille. However, if there's any confusion, you should write the 10 out because you do not want to get anything, say there's a discrepancy, you would always have it written out. So if you say, I'm going to meet you at 10, you could use that number sign zero because you wouldn't meet someone at zero. However, if you say it is blank degrees out, you would wonder, is it zero, is it 10? So please spell it out if there's any way it can be confused. And then 11, so what do you think 11? We're going to use that row two. We're going to add dot three. 11 is K, 12 is L, 13 is M, 14 is N, 15 is O, 16 is P, 17 is Q, 18 is R, 19 is S, and 20 is T. So I'm going to read those one more time. So 11 is K, 12 is L, 13 is M. So we're taking that. For example, look at the number 13 and think about it. So 13 is has a 3. So it's that three, the last numeral added that you're adding the extra dot three to it. So if you're thinking, what is 16? Well, think of the six, that last numeral always helps you. And then what dots are we adding to it? Because it's a teen number, we're adding the dot three. So we had 13 is M, 14 is N, 15 is O, 16 is P, 17 is Q, 18 is R, 19 is S, 20 is T. So then we stop adding that dot three and we revert to row three of our character chart where we're adding dots three, six for 21 to 30. So 21 is U. 22 is V, like Victor. 23 is X. 24 is Y. 25 is Z, like zebra. 26 is and. 27 is four. 28 is of. 29 is the and 30 is with. And don't forget to add that number sign because it is not a number without the number sign. So if you're ever thinking, what is 28? You just have to take that last digit of the number and add the three six. So 21, one through 30, you should have written out. If you have a braille node or a slate, or braille sense, you can have that written out and kind of study it this week. We will go over a few more tonight, but I will, I'm going to call on a number and without looking at your chart, I want someone to tell me what it is. So raise your hands off your chart. <laughs> 20, <laughs> 21, can anyone raise their hand and tell me 21? Go ahead, Daniel. Hold on, everybody's raising their hands, so it's jumping around here. <laughs> yeah, I think Daniel was. All first, right, Daniel, go ahead. <laughs> you should be able to unmute. I have to unmute myself, man. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's uh, you with a number sign before. Yes, perfect. Can anyone tell me 11? Go ahead, Jewel. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, that runs. All right, Jewel, you should be able to unmute. Hey. All right. With the number sign in front of it, of course. 
Yes, number K is 11. All right, I'm gonna lower yeah. hands. Hold on. Lower hand. <laughs> okay. I'll do one. I'll do one more. Let's see. Can anyone tell me the number for 27? All right. Frank. Go ahead, Frank. Unmute. Number sign, the F O R. Uh, sign. Yes, perfect. Yes, you got it. So the numbers, they're fairly easy. And it gives us an exercise here in the grade three. And it has us do just that, writing the numbers without looking at your character chart. So for example, we can lower our hands at this point. So the exercise number one, so question one, it wants you to write 15, 10, 17, 20, 12. So it gives us a few of those. And I mean, just try to think of them in your head. You don't even have to do the order, but just challenge yourself. Say, what is 13? Because for example, I'm just skimming down. Number three on this exercise is 22 space, 21 space, 25 space, 14 space, 23. So just challenging yourself to keep your hands off that chart. But I'm going to talk about larger numbers now. So once we get past 30 with that character chart, we basically have the numbers one through 63. So I'm going to challenge someone what would you think the number 44 would be? All right, area code 518. <laughs> you should be able to unmute. Mary Beth. Actually, I had a question. So so go go ahead and do what, what you're gonna do. All right, go ahead with your question. I had a question. Okay. Um, okay, I had a question about the, the plain number zero. Like, yes. or if you're going to write a time, like say you want to write the time 1002, how would you do it? Well, we're not quite there yet. I don't want to confuse people, but for the zero and the 10, I would just be perfectly clear that, so 1002, you could do 002 because it's, there's not a zero o'clock. But if you say, like I was saying, zero degrees or something that could be confused, you would use the 10. So. But okay, we're gonna go for someone right, who thinks they can tell us forty-four. Ralph was first. Okay, uh, isn't it the lowercase d dots two five six? Yes, it would be. Wow. Okay, I got it right. Mm -hmm. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm gonna give you another hard one. Let's I got to go lower see. hands here. Okay. Yeah. All right. The number fifty-six. Am I muted? Uh, no, you're, no not. you're not muted. But I will mute myself because I okay, have okay. <laughs> okay, Frank. All right, Frank, you should be able to unmute. Number sign hyphen. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is it. And if anyone's thinking, how did he get there? It's the character chart the rows, and that's why I was saying, for example, and I'll go back through this now, just because I think it is worthwhile to notate. So row one is characters or numbers, one through 10. So you could say that row one would be numbers one through 10, or row one would be characters one through 10, and both are correct. Row two represents numbers or characters 11 through 20. So if you wanna write that down, they are 11 through 20. Row three represents 21 through 30. Row four characters represent 31 through 40. 
row five, this is where it starts getting, these are 41 through 50. Row six, this is where it starts getting kind of weird. These are not 51 through 60. Row six is 51 through 56. So row six represents numbers 51 through 56. And row seven is our last row that represents 57 through 63. 57 through 63. So those are just good to notate in case you're wondering what number is this? Those are the ones that you must memorize. So now we're going to talk about larger numbers. So how do you think you would write the number 117, 117? Anyone want to give it a go? Frank? <laughs> Oops, I'm on, I was muted. Sorry, Mary Beth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You should be able to unmute. There you go. Hey, G. Would you use KG for that? No, 100. I, I think, did I say 117? I think that's right. what I said. I lost my train of thought. Yes, so no, you'd actually do the, I'll let someone else, I'll let one more person see if they can. All right, Frank. Go Number, ahead, Frank. Numbers time AQ. Yes. And why is it that way? Can you tell us? Well, the, the number sign is, is what, yeah, yeah the, the what, the A is the one and the Q is the uh, 17. So that's 117. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> in grade three, we kind of write numbers how we say them 117 or 214 would be number sign 2N. So, or if we said 243, it would be number sign two and then the colon, the lower three. Or if we said, I'm gonna give you another one. Um, 756, how would you write 756? Anybody? David. 7.56. David, you can unmute. Okay, it wouldn't let me. Okay, <laughs> uh, it's number sign G hyphen. Yes, correct. But my question is, how do you write like larger uh, double digit numbers? <laughs> Oh, you mean like 84? 64, 65, 80, yeah. I would believe those would just stay in as they are. You can, for example, if it's 2022, the year, you would write the symbol for 20 and the symbol for 22. 22, yeah. Mm -hmm. But if we're saying 95, you'd just or write 64, it. 64, 65, 70. How do you do that? Yeah, you just write them the way they would, You you know? regularly yeah. okay thank you <laughs> all right dan you have your you should be able to unmute okay uh yeah no i, I guess i know it's like it's kind of begs the question here because it, it just seems like when you write all the the, the numbers from one to 63 as a digit then it's it, it almost seems like from a, from a math perspective, it almost behaves like another base system here, like like base 63. In other words, you would have to put a, a like 64 could be written as um, like, I guess the 63 digit in the in the ones column and then the 10, like so number 
like number A, dot six or something. And then start counting from there. Or, no, no, sorry, the other way around, actually. <laughs> it's, it's, I know it seems a little bit odd, but no, I guess 64, you would write it probably. Either. Hi, Daniel, this is Bob. I know exactly where you're coming from. Unfortunately, the Braille cell doesn't, uh, isn't not based on a base 10 system like our numbering system is, so we just have to live with it. Was that incongruity? Yeah, That's it. You kind of, yeah, it's it's a compound. I guess if you're going, yeah. yeah. Like, but to write anything from sixty-four to hundred, I don't know what you do. Yeah. And it says one of the most important points that I find here in the Handley book: you must use your own ingenuity in using the grade three numerals. And it gives us here are a few suggestions to guide you. And I will read this just so people can imagine it. In writing dates, the number of the month is given, followed by the number of the day in the month, and finally, the number of the year. The numeral sign is used only before the first numeral in this group, and spaces are not left between the numeral elements of the date. Thus, you can write, so January 15th, 1835. So we have the January would be the number sign one, 15, so that's oh. easy, the O, and then 1835. It's breaking it down just like we're saying it. So 18 would be the R, 35 would be the WH. So they have number sign one, O, R, WH. Wow. So, I mean, it's not hard. If you think January 15th, 1980, or 1935, you're thinking, oh my gosh, how do I write that? But just break it down. 1, 15, 18, 35. So I'm going to give you one. And someone brave can take the bait. <laughs> October. Okay. Okay, and I'll help you through it. If you October. 28th, 1925, October 28th, 1925. If someone wants to, and if you think you got it, but you're not sure, I'll help you through it. Just if anyone wants to take the bait. October 28th, 1925. I'm going to call on someone at random pretty soon. Okay, wait just a minute. <laughs> okay. Ralph, you should be able to unmute. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep, I got you. Uh, I'm probably wrong here, but <clears throat> number sign J. Uh, yeah. Uh, I forgot. Um, 28. Uh, oh, what was 28? Uh, let me think. Two of... Uh, 1928, right? Is that what you said? No, October 28th of uh, 1925. Okay, that's right. Two, two of uh, S 319 and 25 25. Z. Yes, you got two it. SZ, Congratulations. Right. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. It takes and me a while. Me hey, it's all good. Yes, let me tell you why the J. So a lot of people are thinking, why wouldn't you do 10? Because there's not a zero month. So in that case, the J would be indicative of 10. If we were, if we had a zero, we would not use it. So number sign J of S like Sam, Z like zebra. One more we have that we can do the dates. And March 31st, 1966. Might be someone's birthday out there. March 31st, 1966. Let's see.
Ralph. All right, go ahead, Ralph. And what was H button C? Uh, B, number sign C U S, and I guess six six. C, so March 31. So you got everything right except the 31. Oh, okay. <laughs> the 31 is C H. Oh, oh that's right. Oh, my bad. Okay. Yeah. No, you, right. had C, you had 21. Yeah. So, so would you so. would you just write the 66 out? Yes, you would. So you wouldn't have to put a number sign in front of that though, right? No, it's all okay. run together. So it looks so, like FF, right? I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So FF. Okay. Okay. So it'd be number number sign C C H okay. S like Sam F F. Oh my goodness. Good job with the teaching. Oh, this is cool. So yeah, some of those numbers like say 84, it wouldn't be I guess it wouldn't be proper to abbreviate it because other numbers have the two symbols and there's nothing really to abbreviate it to. Just so you know, Kristen, you have nine minutes left. Okay. <laughs> I think I will touch on one more aspect. Oh, Audrey and, has, uh, no, I'm sorry. No, no she doesn't. Oh, okay. We're going to stop hands for the time being. I'm just going to touch on one more thing and then we will talk about our next lesson. So things like sums of money, 35 cents. 35 cents would be number sign. There's two different ways to write this. So think of 35, 35 is the WH, right? So number sign, decimal point, WH, or you could do, and this is back in the day before the new dollar sign, you could do period, number sign, decimal, WH. So a lot of it is just, common sense, I mean, 35 cents. So you have that 35, take the number out, dig out the number, figure out how to write it, and then put the cents sign. $19. So again, this is the old dollar sign where I think of dollar signs as dot four S because I'm in my mid twenties, but for you older people, <laughs> the old dollar sign is period number S. That is $19, period, number, S. So that S, the 19, we add dot one to nine. Excuse 40. me, Kristen. Oh, sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's Audrey. I just have a, a, a comment on the sense. Wouldn't yeah. we also, since since we are, many of us older, um, <clears throat> we we did force that four and a C. I think we would use that in literary Braille as a set yes. sign. So couldn't we also do it that way? I don't know why you couldn't. Yeah. It's um, showing the I, decimal, I, but. Yeah, I'm almost sure that we did the sense. I, you know, that didn't change. I think that's still, I better check my UEB, but I'm almost sure it's still the same in UEB. Little question um, for, uh, dot four and C can all, they wouldn't be confused for numbers themselves. Oh. See, because that's that's still four stands for a number, and so does that. See, and and I, I have a question actually quickly for Kristen. What's the decimal point that you were referring to earlier? What dot numbers? So the decimal they're using here is dots four six. You see, and that's a number yeah. in itself. You see what I mean? This is all oh. context sensitive. Yes. So the decimal point followed by that thirty five. Yeah, decimal point is a number. What's the, what's dot four six is a number? Excuse my, uh, I, I don't have my cheat sheet in front of me. Uh, it's that's sixty some. It's around sixty. Uh, you got yeah. it there, Chris. <laughs> Let me grab mine. Yeah. <laughs> even, <laughs> even worse. <laughs> I'm learning along with you. I'm no expert here. So the dot. This is yeah. 57 to 63 and 50, okay, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61 is the decimal, 61. Okay, so you, you, you said oh. 60 and one, and then you, you did the, the, the context for 35, which was a, uh, yes. uh, so couldn't, couldn't we confuse that with numbers 61, 35, 
instead of 35, decimal point 35. Again, this if is all say, context sensitive, yeah. context sensitive folks. So if you say I have number sign decimal 35 in my pocket, you wouldn't have that much money, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> most of us, most of us wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I found, I found number sign decimal 35 on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah okay Paul we'll take yours and then I'm going to wrap us up here all right Paul you should yeah. be able to unmute sorry let me um let me first thank Kristen for for doing the class and second let let me say to the folks who had the issue with regard to the to how whether the numbers would get in the way remember you have a sign either for dollars or cents before the number sign which actually tells you that you should be looking for the the probability of of a uh, a decimal point and 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 that really is uh, i think a lot of the point in grade 3 braille it it has an expectation that A, you know that chart, and B, uh, I think the second expectation is that uh, is that you you can exercise common sense. And what they say in all of the courses is is you are going to find ambiguities in grade three. It's just it's 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 the the nature of the game. Um, but as long as you know what you mean, that that's the most important thing. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. I have a question for Bob or Audrey, because one of these exercises, it says write the following in grade three, $4,000. How uh -huh. would you do that? $4,000. Oh, good, Audrey. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking on my feet here. I would do the, 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 the low D number sign. And then, I'm sorry, how many dollars? 4000 4000 same, I'm thinking of the 40, but we wouldn't do that, right? No, that, that's, no. that's 40 hundred. I, I don't think in terms of that. I would do four and then, you know, wow, that's a good question. Four and then, and then three zeros, just regular zeros? Yeah, maybe. Well, is there a better way? Because well, you know, we have 19,000. Yeah, you know, we we actually, I think this is good because we have a call. Um, we have at least, I, I think her name was Nancy or somebody. We have uh, yeah. participants we who, may ask, who actually may know more than some of us panelists. Yeah. And yeah. And, 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 and we would love their participation in, in this yeah. process. So if, if so, email Kristen with that answer. <laughs> we will, $4,000, $19,000. Think about that, everyone. And next week we'll reconvene. <laughs> 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 so 19,000 it gives like 935 dollars yeah but okay so i'm gonna wrap us up because we are getting low on time yeah and again my name is Kristen Steele. my email is very simple it's braille all spelled out mailbox at gmail.com braille mailbox at gmail.com or if you would prefer you can email cindy at community at acb.org and she will also send that on to me and if you'd like a reference on bard you can get the key to grade three braille by l w rodenberg and that's the best that's my favorite reference otherwise they have the braille code a guide to grade three. However, that's very specific and some of it's, the teaching is more specific for learners who are, have a strong foundation of some of these signs and symbols. So the key to grade three is a very good reference. But we thank you all for joining us and Audrey will be back next week to build on our second lesson. Can I just ask you a real quick question? I'm not supposed yeah. to do this, but I'm going to do it no, anyway. Go ahead. <laughs> do you still have the email list that you created uh, during the Braille Buzz call? I do. And I was going to mention that in a future call, but we're hoping that we get the same, say, 15, 20 
participants to stick with us for two or three calls and then we will get that established but yes okay. it is I still think, active i think i'm still on it i didn't take myself off of it so i should yeah be. yeah okay. i'm sure you are we do have an email list for people who wish to continue so the next couple lessons once we get ourselves more established as a regular study group we will bring that information to you okay great all right. Well, cool. thank you again, everyone. And we look forward to our next session. All right. Thanks, Kristen. Thanks, Kristen. Great job. Thank you. <laughs> I will end out the webinar. Oh, 40 people. I know. <laughs> That's so cool. Thank you, Kristen. The, the pressure was on. <laughs> We had over we had like fifty seven at one point. Yeah, oh, I didn't see. I took my yeah. hands off the computer and I was looking at all this braille. So I did. Wow, that's good. Yeah. So. Yeah, I let Lucy do the maneuvering yeah. and. Audrey well, from New York, we had we had a we had a, a five one eight. I think we may have had two of them. We did have a five one six, but I couldn't. I didn't recognize the number. I wonder if it was Mary Ellen. No, okay, and, and Mary. No, it Beth, wasn't. It, was... it wasn't Mary. It wasn't Mary Ellen. I would have recognized okay. the number. Yeah, of course. But we had Mary Beth and um, and Daniel. That was great. Yeah, I. You yeah. know, uh, I, we're not on the radio anymore. We're not. Are we we're on, the radio? on recording, and we have twenty people listening to us. Okay, fine. Okay. We'll we'll have a. <laughs> so we'll, I will we'll, end this. We'll I will end this out, and we can connect. Yeah. All right. Good night. Thank you.